say the next one, log base 4 of 16. 4 to what power is 16? The 2, the second power, 4 squared is, two, is 16. Okay, and then that last example there, log base 5 of negative 25. 5 to what power is negative 25? Mm, be careful. Is that possible? Can we multiply 5 by itself a certain number of times and get negative 25? That's not possible. We cannot multiply a positive number by itself and somehow end up with a negative. The only way you can end up with a negative number is for somewhere along the line there to be a negative. Okay, because, let, let's just review this a minute. Okay, 5 squared, that means 5 times 5. Okay, positive times positive is always going to be a positive. Um, so that gives us positive 25. There's no way for us to get negative 25. I know it's tempting to say, well, what about 5 to the negative 2? Well, remember that property got negative exponents? We move them to the denominator to make them positive. So that's actually equal to 1 over 25. It's not equal to negative 25. So anytime there's a negative inside of the logarithm, that answer is undefined. Okay, undefined, and I abbreviate that U and Z, um, but just so you know, that is undefined. Okay, now, uh, it actually turns out that we can check these using our calculators in something called change of base. Because if you look at your calculator, there is a log button on there, but when you type the log, it doesn't give you the option to change the base there, unless you have one of the newer calculators. Um, you cannot change that base. So the way that we handle that, if, we, if we're trying to figure out uh, what log base 4 of 16 is, you take the log of, I call it the big number. It's not necessarily bigger in magnitude, um, but it's the number that's not the subscript. Okay, divided by, make sure you close the parentheses, divided by the log of the base, 4 in this case, and that'll give you 2. All right, so you can always check these using your calculator and change your base. The biggest thing I want to warn you about is make sure you close your parentheses right there. Because if you don't, here's what's going to happen. If you just start typing and keep typing, that is not the correct answer. Okay, 1.424 is not the correct answer to log base 4 of 16. Okay, so try 5 through 10 there on your worksheet. Turns out not every logarithm is nice and pretty and what we just did. Okay? Not every logarithm represents a perfect whole number exponent relationship. Um, so if we're trying to figure out, well, what's log base 2 of 1.2? I have no idea off the top of my head. 2 to what power is 1.2? Okay, I, There's no true way uh, to figure that out. Um, we're not using your calculator, so this is where you've got to use the change of base. Okay, that would be log of 1.2 divided by the log of 2. I'm writing it out so you know what you type into your calculator if you look back at this at some point. And that gives us approximately 0.263. Okay, so similarly, log base 5 of 6.7, that would be the log of 6.7 divided by the log of 5. And that's approximately 1.182. I always do about three numbers after the decimal just to be uh, precise. Okay, uh, log base six of three point one. Log of three point one divided by the log of six is approximately point six three one. Now, um, sometimes you won't have a base. Okay, that base is understood to be ten. But in that case, you can just type that straight into your calculator. Okay, log of 53, you just type it straight into your calculator. You don't have to do change of base, so 
that means 10 to the 1.724 power is equal to 53. Okay. Okay, so if there's no base, it's an understood 10. So the log of 2 is equal to 0 0.301. Uh, the log of 8 is equal to 0 0.903. And 3 times the log of 2 is also 0 0.903. So there's something going on here um, with this relationship. Is there some way that we can rewrite 8 so that it has a base of 2? Can we rewrite 8 so that it has a base of 2? 2 to what power is 8? The third, right? 2 cubed is 8. So apparently these two values are equal to each other. So there turns out that there's this property of logarithms that says if you have the log base A of something raised to a power, then that is equal to that power moved in front times the log of A. So what we can do is we can move exponents to become coefficients in front, or vice versa, whichever way you want to look at the relationship, we can move coefficients to become exponents. It just kind of depends on which one is more useful to us. So we're going to rewrite some logarithms using this property. So log base five, uh, excuse me, log of five cubed can also be written that is equal to the uh, three times the log of 5. That property says that that exponent can become a coefficient. And you can check it. You can type in the log of 5 cubed, and you can type in 3 times the log of 5. And they're going to give you the exact same answer. They look very different, right? The log of 5 cubed is 125 versus 3 times the log of 5 seems kind of weird that those would give you the exact same answer, but they do. Okay, so B, 2 log of 6, we can write that as log of 6 squared as well. That coefficient can become an exponent. We can do it with variables. They don't have to be numbers. So log of x to the fourth is equal to 4 log of x. And 5 log of y is equal to log of y to the 5th. Okay, so I want you to practice with that property, 15 through 20. Okay, so the log of 2 is 0 0.301. The log of 3 is 0.477. And the log of 6 is 0.778. Is there a connection between those three numbers or a relationship that we could put together? How about between the 2, 3, and 6? What's the relationship between 2, 3, and 6? 2 times 3 is 6. Okay. So how about their values? 0 0.301, 0 0.477, and 0 0.778. Can we combine two of those somehow to get the third one? Mm-hmm. Yep. Adding the 0 .301 and 0 .477 will give us the 0 .778. So, there's our next property. Okay? When you are adding two logarithms, as long as they have the same base, then you can combine them into a single logarithm and you multiply what was inside the two logs. Okay, so log of A plus log of B is equal to the log of A times B. And we can use that both ways. We can separate it or we can put it together.
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate it. We're going to expand these logarithms. So the log of xy is equal to the log of x plus the log of y. We can expand it. That may be useful to us. It just depends. The log of 7 times 6 will be the log of 7 plus the log of 6. Log base 2 of 11 times 3. Well, exact same property. We just have a base of 2. Log base 5 of 3xy. We can separate three things as well. Log base 5 of 3 plus log base 5 of x plus log base 5 of y. Now, usually it's not as helpful to expand it to make it bigger. Sometimes it is. Um, for example, like if I asked what's the log of 42, but I had given you the log of 7 and the log of 6, you could just add those two numbers together to get the log of 42. That's when expanding is useful. Um, but condensing is usually what's most helpful. Okay, being able to say, okay, if I'm adding two logs, well then, then that means I've just got the log of the product. Okay, the log of u plus the log of v is the log of u times v. The log of 8 plus the log of 3, that's equal to the log of 24, 8 times 3. Log base 2 of 6 plus log base 2 of 11. They must have the same base, okay? They do have to have the same base uh, in order to be able to put them together. So that's equal to the log base 2 of 66. And the log base 9 of x plus the log base 9 of y plus the log base 9 of z. We can put all those together into a single log and we're multiplying those three together, x, y, z. And I suggest putting in parentheses.